All right, so if you're interested in field herping or uh, any kind of wildlife identification, birds, flowers, trees, doesn't matter, you're going to need a field guide. These are one of the most important tools, something you're always going to want to have on you. And um, we'll be talking specifically about reptiles and amphibians because, uh, you know, that's mostly what this channel is about. But this will, this will apply across the board to others as well. Um, we're going to talk about how to select a field guide, what's the, what are some of the better field guides to get, and then we're also going to talk about some of the, the more extensive reference books and why those are important too. So when selecting a field guide, let's say you're at the bookstore or you're on Amazon, which is more likely these days, you're going to want to look for a few things. Um, first off, now this, like books like this are, are decent um, general guides. <clears throat> you get some basic information from them, but they're not extensive. Uh, this was my first field guide, actually, to reptiles and amphibians. I got this when I was maybe seven years old, eight years old. Um, it's pretty old and beat up, but they do still make it and sell it. And um, just to flip through it real quick, you know, you get you get some species on there, you get some descriptions, but it's mostly going to be concerned with the more common species, the stuff you're more likely to find in your backyard, or the more charismatic species like hellbenders and alligators and things like that. It's not going to have <clears throat> some of the more obscure species, it's not going to have a lot of subspecies, you know, so let's say I find a garter snake. Okay, that's it on garter snakes. We all know, well, some of us know there are tons of species and subspecies of garter snakes, but this has western plains ribbon in common. Doesn't deal with the different color variations, doesn't deal with the different subspecies, the common garter snake alone. Uh, you got like your eastern garter snake, you have your red-sided garter snake, you have tons of subspecies of just the one snake. And this, this kind of book isn't going to do that. Now I loved this book when I was growing up. I poured over this book, I read every page of it. And it was good for that, you know, it's a good book for kids or you know, someone with a casual interest, but this is not what you're going to want in the field. Likewise, you got a lot of books like this. Um, so, Familiar Reptiles and Amphibians of North America. Pocket Guide. Okay. So, again, lots of pretty pictures in this one. I had this one as a kid, too. And, um, but it's going to be the more common species, the more flamboyant species, the, you know, the stuff that's going to grab your attention, things like the snapping turtle, you know. And it's got the common snap turtle, but it doesn't have the alligator snap turtle. You can't really use this as a field guide. It's more just like a general fun book to have, you know. So, that's off, that's off the table. Then you have books like this, which look more like a proper field guide, alright? And this is Reptiles and Fibbins in the World, Simon & Schuster's Guide. Uh, 200 full-color photographs of international species. So this is of the world, right? Why would you need any other field guide? You got you got the world right here. Well, it only covers 200 species. And New York State alone has 70 species of reptile and amphibian, so 200 species is barely scratching the surface globally. And so again, it's just it's a fun book to have to look through. Like, oh, that's a that's a pretty uh, lizard there, the double crested basilisk. Um or the, you know, the collared lizard and you know, some unique stuff from around the world just showcasing them. Some general information about about them, but ultimately, really, I mean, it's kind of a useless book. I wouldn't even have it if I didn't find it cheap at a book sale. So then we get in the proper field guides, of which the, the two that you're most likely to find are the Peterson and the National Audubon Society. Now, the National Audubon Society, uh, I used to like these a lot before I, I knew much about field guides and and uh, you know, honestly, looking back, I mean, they're not they're not great either. Again, you get lots of pretty pictures, and that's the benefit. You get actual photographs, but you only usually get one photograph of a species, despite the fact that there's tons of individual variation. Key key identifying characteristics aren't pointed out, and even a book like this, as thick as it is, isn't going to cover every species in a given region. So, I mean, it's not, so this is not a bad book, 
but again it's not really what you're going to want um, from my personal viewpoint um, species descriptions are all in the back you're almost relying extent entirely on the picture to try to identify your animal in the field if you come across a Texas rose belly lizard you're gonna have to flip to another page to even look to see what characteristics make it a Texas rose belly lizard so <clears throat> with that in mind let's look at the Peterson and here's an older copy of the Peterson this is the fourth edition this just came out and I got mine in the mail yesterday 14 bucks on Amazon you cannot go wrong with this this is the old this is an older edition this is the second edition and um, the, but the Peterson guide is the, the gold standard of field guides this is the book you want with you in the field if you have no other book on reptiles and amphibians this is the one you want and the same is true for others too like you want a field guide to fish get the Peterson you want a field guide tree get the Peterson they do the best field guides um, and the layout of the book and of most field guides in general is um, that the animals are taxonomically arranged so you're gonna have like uh, your amphibians first in this book because amphibians evolved first right okay so they're a more primitive group primitive um, and then you're gonna move on you get your turtles and your lizards and snakes and things and but and they're but they're arranged in a way that they're related to each other this book is is kind of odd it arranges them by patterns which is you know could be useful in its own right too so you got like striped snakes lumped together and solid colored snakes lumped together um, and, but again overall it is arranged taxonomically amphibians are always going to be in the front of the book with the more primitive salamanders appearing first so you're going to get like your your amphumas mud puppies hellbenders cave salamanders and then you know your lungless salamanders which are the more recently evolved groups towards the back of the salamander section so but, okay so now you got your field guide and you're going to want to know how to use it and it's a little bit daunting because there's a lot of information here I mean we're covering every species of reptile amphibian in the eastern central North America so for starters you got the color the color coding down here which is a nice handy feature I like that um, let's open it up to snakes all right so the way it's going to be outlined is you're going to have descriptions in there scattered throughout you're going to have range maps but in the beginning of the snake section you're going to have your color plates and like I said before they're going to be organized taxonomically so based on how they're related okay so you're going to flip through here let's say you see a green snake all right a solid green snake and you want to identify what species it is ah there we go green snakes okay so you see a green snake there's two species of green snakes okay there's the rough green and smooth green all right easy enough you narrowed it down to two species where do you go from there okay well the smooth green snake has smooth scales rough green snake has keeled scales there you go it's that easy right um, for a lot of these species too there's also little arrows that point out key features to tell them to distinguish them from others so um, as an example you look at the western milk snake red rings variable in width head black snout normally light so it's pointing at the snout to show you that the snout is normally light that the head is black and that's how you're going to tell it from something like the scarlet king snake but going back to the green snakes okay so maybe you know you just saw it slithering through the brush you didn't get a good look at the scales you still don't know what species it is you want to know more you're going to turn to the page where it has the actual information and the range maps so 382 okay so now you're here you're here there's the rough green snake and the smooth green snake well okay so if you live in New York or the Northeast Vermont Maine anywhere up there you can automatically rule out the rough green snake easy right it doesn't live there it lives here but if you live in one of the places where they overlap you know it might be a little bit more difficult so let's see there really isn't a, a lot of overlap for this species is there but either way it's gonna tell you more specifically how to tell them apart 
Uh, and it's also going to tell you what the similar species is. So for the rough green snake, the similar species is obviously the smooth green snake. Again, has smooth scales. Also the North American racer, so that's a similar species. Sometimes is green, but has smooth scales again. So rough green snake, a green snake with rough scales, you got that one in the bag, you know what it is. But it'll also tell you how long they get, you know, the record length, um, more specifically, what colors and patterns you can expect, the habitat, the range. Very basic information. All right, so this, this is going to help you identify the animal in the field. But if you want to know more about that animal, the field guide is only going to cover the basics. You're going to want something a little bit more specific. And so as far as specific books go, the next book you're going to want is a state-specific book to wherever you live or a regional book, so Northeast or Southeast or New York State. This is going to only cover the species that live in your state or region. So if you're looking at salamanders, you automatically get to rule out all these species that don't live in your state. If your state only has like a handful of salamander species, like let's say 7 or 18 even, I mean look at them all. It's a little daunting. So you get your regional guide, it's only going to cover what is local to you. So I can't stress enough the importance of getting a regional guide. I don't know which states, you know, most states will have them. They're not as easier to come by, as easy to come by as the uh, field guides. But they're going to be, again, outlined in a similar way. Taxonomically, salamanders first. All right, it's going to, in this book, again, it's going to give you some descriptions to identify in the field at a glance. But there's going to be suggestions for where to go in the book to get more information. So, you know, you're in New York State, you want to know more about the Eastern Spadefoot Toad. Maybe you want to know where to find the Eastern Spadefoot Toad. Well, uh, you got to go to Long Island, a few spots up on the uh, eastern half of the state. I live all the way out here. I'm not going to see an Eastern Spadefoot Toad. So, you're going to want a regional book. Alright, next up are these super specific books, some of which are more user friendly than others. But um, all of them are equally important. So, you know, maybe you want a book specifically about snakes. Okay, here's a good one. Snakes in North America, Eastern Central Regions. Again, it's kind of like that New York State book. It's only going to cover a certain part of the, the country, and it's only going to cover snakes. And so the information is going to be, I mean, it was like a brief paragraph for the rough green snake in the Peterson Guide. But this book is going to have... A page and a half of information. You're going to get, you're going to get more familiar with the animal. You're going to understand more about it. Where you're going to find it. Its life history. When it's active. Uh, reproduction. What it eats. Books like this are important. Some of them, though, like this one, are very technical, and more for um, the really the people really serious about finding the snakes. I wouldn't even call this a field guide. Um, more like a reference book. It's going to have a lot more information than the, either the field guides or the general reference books. But, um, you know, if you're a serious student of snakes, this is the one you'll want. You know, things like, or I should say, herps. But we're looking at snakes specifically. So, you know, you're going to have the common garter snake. But check this out. I mean, you're going to have species and subspecies. You're going to have um, really specific descriptions. Geographic variation, it's going to go into the subspecies level. You're going to have pictures of most of those subspecies. You're going to have your range maps, of course. But look at that. All this, we're still covering just that garter snake alone. And when I talk about getting into specifics, I mean getting into specifics. They're going to tell you uh, the clutch size. They're going to tell you the 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 length of the young. I was going to say eggs, but the common garter snake gives live birth. But it's going to give you, you know, way more information than you'll ever need. But still, you know, if you can get it, if you're into it, do it. Again, this is the turtle equivalent of the, the snake book here. Very specific. Very good reference. This is probably, these books are the kind of books, these are the first and last books you'll ever need 
like if you if you only want to own one book about snakes specifically in the United States canon, like this will be the book to own. This will be the turtle book to own. You're not going to need um, much else. So you could you could get by on let's say let's say you're super into snakes. You can get by on this, this, and this. All right. You got your general field guide. You got your specific your regional field guide. And then, if snakes are what you're really into, grab that guy. So, I guess that about sums it up. There's not much else to say as far as field guides go. I hope I wasn't too confusing. I was trying to talk fast and make the video short. Um, but let me know what you thought. Let me know if it was helpful. Um, yeah, and happy herping. In the future, I might do some specific reviews on some of these books. I was just kind of trying to give you a an overall uh, understanding of what we're dealing with, how to use them, and what to look for. When in doubt, just buy the Peterson. That's the one you need. You know, that's the first and foremost book.